Tracy Clark behind the plate. And Ashton Maloney will lead things off for the Longhorns. Glad you're with us from Lawrence. First pitch misses outside. Misses as well, 2 0. Kansas has had the pleasure, if you will, of hosting the number one team in the country twice this season. Oklahoma was in town. Texas has climbed to number one as the Longhorns come to Lawrence. 3 0 now on the leadoff hitter, Ashton Maloney. You can see here starting out, the zone is tight. I think it's key for Katie Brooks. She's got to find it early, kind of see what the umpire zone is going to be like the rest of the day. Strike from Brooks, three and one. Down low, so leadoff walk for Maloney. And it'll bring Mia Scott to the plate, as we said. Just a sensational series. A couple of hits on Saturday. A double and a home run on Friday night. Lays down a bunt. Flanagan with a strong throw gets her. Good play from the freshman at third base. Flanagan's tested early. Mia Scott's so talented. It looks like we're going to see a review. Red receives the ball. So two on now for Texas with nobody down. And Vivi Martinez, the shortstop. Martinez has looked to square both times here. You can see the third baseman for Kansas is in. This is a bunt situation, trying to get both runners into scoring position. Strike called, one and two. Side two and two. With Mia Scott's bunt, she has now had 200 career hits. And I think it's so funny. She has so much power. She's so talented. And she gets hit number 200 on what was a sacrifice situation that she turns into a hit. And a review nonetheless. Martinez did not go. Full count now. Bases are loaded for the Longhorns. And Reese Atwood comes to the plate. Kansas would like a talk with Katie Brooks. Reese Atwood with 65 RBIs on the year. Big RBI chance here. Nobody out. Bases loaded. Ball one. Good. 
Down low, 2 and 0 oh now. Down low. Carsley does well to block that one and keep it in front of her. 3 and 0 oh now. Therese Atwood. I saw her on a 3-0 pitch count yesterday. Take one right back to center field. She was green light all the way. We'll see if she gets that today. Brooks delivers. Strike called. Ground ball. Comes home with it. Flanagan with a nice play to first, not in time. But Kansas keeps Texas off the board. Great job by Katie Brooks. She comes inside here, jams Reese Atwood up. Flanagan makes a great play, and they try to turn two. Here's Katie Stewart. Right back to the pitcher. Brooks home to first. Double play for this Longhorn pitching staff. So Mike White is making defensive changes here. And Casey, it's just so where they start out in the lineup card is not where they end up on the field, right? Can you explain a little bit? That is correct. He's going to try to help them as much as they can for postseason honors. He puts them into the lineup a certain way, and right before they start the defensive inning, he's going to make changes. So Ashton Maloney was at third base. She is now in right, and Mia Scott started in right field, and she is now switched to third base, and that's the only switch that we had today. So in essence, you get credit for starting at that position because you were in the lineup at that position. And then in postseason honors, you can be voted at that position, correct? That is correct. Presley Limbaugh leads things off, looks at ball one. Sit Lolly Gutierrez is going to keep the ball down in the zone. She's 7-0 and on the year. She's going to rely on her defense here. Strike call, one and one. So Limbaugh with a pair of hits in this series. Strike called on the outside corner, one and two. And it does look to me as well that we have a change behind the plate potentially. Just outside. Reese Atwood had been designated other position, but then had started as catcher. Is that Katie Stewart behind the plate? I can't tell the number with the. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Meanwhile, Limbaugh is called out on strikes. You see Presley Limbaugh here gets called for a check swing. The home plate umpire calls it right off the bat for a strikeout. So it's Ainsley Linda for Kansas. Uh, two hits on Friday night. Swing and a miss. Outside two and one. Gutierrez has had some big wins for Texas. 
early on, she beat UCLA, Tennessee. She's beaten Oklahoma State. She beat Oklahoma. That's right, call two and two. Kansas was able to strike early on Saturday and take the lead. We'll see if that defensive play in the top of the first carries over offensively. And the fouls it off. Texas had bases loaded, nobody out, and a 3-0 count to one of the best RBI producers in the country. As far as you can get to the edge and didn't allow a run. Double play, bailed him out in the top of the first. Hit hard. Pass Washington to second base. Lindup is on base, one down. That's a great job by Ainsley Linda. She sees the ball and hits the ball hard to second base. That's a hit. And here's Haley Kripe. What a big day on Saturday with a triple and a home run. Holds back, 1-0. Light breeze blowing across the outfield from left to right. And Kripe struggled on Friday a little bit. She chased, she refocused on Saturday and had a great day. Yeah, Scott goes to second for one. Not in time at first, but the leadoff runner is taken care of and two down. Here's Olivia Bruno with a big two run home run on Friday night. Her second home run of the week. Oh, and fouled it in front. Taken care of by Gutierrez. And that'll end the inning. I a shot. So it took a little bit in both cases, but the correct call, I think, is made in both chances. And so Bruno will be back at the plate. Both head coaches working hard for their student <laughs> athletes early in this game to give them every chance they can to score a run. Look at it one more time. So it's not strike two on Bruno. She swings and misses. Swing and a miss. Strikeout ends the inning. <laughs> Alyssa Washington leads off the second inning for Texas. Popped into short right field. Tough play and a diving attempt. Just comes out of the glove of Emma Tatum. Great effort from the second baseman. That was a great effort by Emma Tatum. She really gets a great read on that ball. She just quite can't come down with it as she leaves her feet. Would have been a sensational catch. She had a long way to go. That wind is blowing the ball towards the fence there in right field on the first baseline. So another chance for Washington, one and one. Down low, two and one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. 
It looked to me there that Brooks might have shown off speed, which she doesn't show often. And I think it's important to her. You can see she's going to keep the ball down in the zone, and it's finding that sweet spot. Some umpires like the knee location, some don't. In the center field, Price to her left, makes the catch, one down. I think you can see the wind kind of drift this ball into right field. Price did a nice job to stay with it. Katie Simmons playing first base today for Texas. Number seven hitter. She homered yesterday late in the game straight to center field. She does have pop. We'll see if she can continue that today. Wind actually picking up now left to right across the outfield. So we're going to miss one and one. Kind of pushing the ball to right field today. Two and one. What kind of confidence does that give Katie Brooks in that Kansas defense to see Texas load the bases and be able to keep them coming up empty? Yeah, when your four hole is up with bases loaded and she has 65 RBIs, I think that has to give you total confidence. Tatum to her right, makes the play. Two away. And that's exactly what Katie Brooks has to do. She does a nice job of keeping the ball on the infield, using her defense to get out. Kaden Henry steps in. She had a home run on Saturday. Outside 1-0. And very similar to Kansas's offense yesterday, Texas is going to have to find how to get their barrel underneath this drop ball that they're throwing. Brooks has only given up four home runs on the year, which I think might be the second least amount in the Big 12. So they'll have to make an adjustment at the plate. Good pitch from Brooks, one and one. Two and one. Right back up the middle. Base hit. Caden Henry's on with two outs. Caden Henry does a nice job here. That ball is on the outside part of the plate. Really a good pitch, but she takes it right back where it came from. Drives the ball opposite way. Good piece of hitting by Caden Henry. So it's the number nine hitter, Bella Dayton. And you'll see, we normally see Lyric Moore behind the plate. We'll see if Carsley gets tested here. It's Caden Henry's 20 for 23 on stolen base attempts. Abby Carsley with a good arm, too. Runner goes. The throw. Safe. Looks like Henry got a pretty good jump. You always say. You always say that when the ball is up top in the pitcher's hand, you want to start by the time your reaction lands. That's a good timing. And she gets her foot in right before the tag. So runner in scoring position with two down for Bella Dayton. Strike call two and one. Down 
Still three and one. field line drifting foul and typically I feel like on a normal day that ball would be over the fence foul out of play and you see the wind catches it and keeps it on the field the wind is has picked up quite a bit here three two pitch with two down Back up the middle, Brooks gloves it. Over to first. And Longhorns are retired. Texas leaves one aboard. We're going to the bottom of the second. Still scoreless here in Lawrence. In the bottom of the second, Campbell Bagshaw leads it off. Looks at strike one. Bagshaw with three hits. In this series against Texas. Down on the count now, 0 2. Bagshaw has been such a great story of really taking advantage of her opportunities. She didn't play much last year, has solidified herself in a starting role this year, and has really been critical to Kansas's success. One and two now to the sophomore. Battles away. Swing and a miss. Gutierrez with a good pitch. Gets her second strikeout. Third strikeout, actually. Gutierrez does a nice job. That's an off speed down in the zone that she hasn't shown often, but she uses it with two strikes and gets back shot for the strikeout. Abby Carsley now getting the start at catcher today. We saw Carsley Homer in the Oklahoma series. She does have pop. She's usually pretty aggressive when the pitch is in the zone. Strike called one and one. Hit hard. Mia Scott. With the pickup and the throw, two down. The third baseman, number 12, September Flanagan. Carsley just gets around that one a little bit. Mia Scott does a nice job of picking up that hard ground ball for out number one, or two, excuse me. September Flanagan now getting the start at third base. Strike call. Flanagan pinch hit yesterday at the end of the game and came in and got a hit right off the bat. She homered against Missouri State in a midweek game. Takes this one to center field. Henry retreats, makes the catch, and the Jayhawks go one, two, three. We're heading to the, it's the top of the order for Texas here in the third. Ashton Maloney looks at strike one. Maloney drew a walk in the first inning. Texas loaded the bases and nobody out in a 3-0 count to Reese Atwood and the Jayhawks were able to get out of the jam without allowing a run. Down low one and one. 
And that's something you don't see very often with this Texas offense. I saw in between innings associate head coach Steve Singleton, who really handles the hitters, having a conversation of taking probably advantage of those opportunities. Fouls about one and two now. Side two and two. Right back up the middle. Nice hit from Asher Maloney. It's almost like she saw the opening and just punched it through there. Yeah, Ashton Maloney does a great job. She doesn't even finish her swing there. She just gets her barrel to the ball, makes sure she makes solid contact for a nice base hit up the middle. Maloney's a threat at second base with Mia Scott at the plate now. They dropped a perfect bunt in the first inning. Turned it into a base hit. Side one and one. <laughs> Strike called one and two. Job by Carsley to block that pitch in the dirt. Two and two. Carsley has done a really nice job up until this point of keeping the ball in front of her and doing everything she can. Full count now. Third baseline. Nice play from Flanagan. She was running out of room. They made a great play. That's a great play by September Flanagan. With this win, you cannot give up on that ball. She gets there and turns immediately around, knowing she's got speed at first. What a great play for Flanagan. So one down for Vivi Martinez, who walked in the first inning. Side two and zero. You're curious to see what Mike White is giving Vivi Martinez. Two zero is a hitter's count. Three and zero now, and Garzy wins a word with Kitty Brooks. Call three and one. Mm. 
A pie. And Brooks gives up her third walk. So here's Reese Atwood. It was just two RBIs short of setting a new single season record for Texas. 65 coming into this game. A pair of home runs on Saturday. It's down low, 1 0. She came up in inning number one with bases loaded. She has another chance here. She's been so good with runners in scoring position. Foul on the right field line. A lot of great notes to the season that she's having. I, I think maybe the most impressive thing to me was that she was at 50 RBIs with less than 100 plate appearances. I mean, she's got obviously some hitters in front of her who can get on base, but you're driving in a run every other time at the plate is pretty impressive. Outside. And then I, two and one. it might actually be a little more than every other at bat right. if you think about it. And that's what head coach Mike White says he loves about her. Her demeanor never really changes, no matter if she's struggling or if she's on fire. Takes that one inside. Katie Brooks really wanted that strike. Three and one now. When you're facing a hitter and Reese Atwood, as a pitcher, you definitely want that pitch location right there. Atwood draws a walk. And once again, the Longhorns have the bases loaded, this time with one out. Here's Katie Stewart, who grounded into a double play to end that first inning with the bases loaded. That's a strike one. Strike two. Katie Brooks doing a nice job there. Definitely those last two pitches of finding that spot at the knees that the umpire is going to call for a strike. If she remains there, she should have success throughout the game. On the ground, Kreit to second, to first, double play. Once again, the Jayhawks get out of a bases loaded jam. With a and if the defense isn't set at that point, then they will begin with a ball. So Tatum starts off with a 1-0 count and then flies out to center field. So it's a ball that goes against the count of the team that's not ready in essence, right? That is correct. One down for Angela Price. In fairness, it was Katie Stewart who grounded out to end the inning. Try to go back and get her catcher gear on and get back out there in time. That may have been part of the delay. 1 0 pitch. Yeah, and the minute 30 second clock in between innings, and then every pitch, you also have a 20 second clock. I think that's their option to kind of speed up the game, keep it moving. Strike called. What do you think of the 20 second clock? I just think it keeps the pace going. I don't think um, a pitcher needs more than 20 seconds necessarily, unless they call time and they need to have a discussion or shake off a pitch. I don't mind it. It does keep things moving. It's a strike two. 
And if you're Angela Price, those last two pitches that you've seen, that's a 2-0 hitter's count. Those are elevated on the middle of the plate. You have to be ready for one of those. Takes this one to the left field, and that's going to be trouble. To the wall. Price on her way to second base. An extra base hit for Angela Price. Bella Dayton was in a little bit shallow in left field. Angela Price does a nice job of keeping her hands inside that ball. Bella Dayton scoots in because sometimes Price does show butt, but she does a nice job there and takes advantage of Bella Dayton playing in. Gets a double out of it. So top of the order for Kansas. Presley Limbaugh steps in. Struck out in the first inning. Strike called. And at the beginning of the game, you saw those strikes at the knees were struggling to be called. You see the home plate umpire has opened her zone just a tad. That one too far outside, one and one. Stewart on it quickly. And Price thought about going to third. She says, my bad, she wanted that one. She just didn't get the right read. And ultimately, if you don't go right when you see that ball hit the dirt, she made a good decision to stay at two. Bunt laid down, and it's a good one. Throw to first is not in time. Presley Limbaugh does a nice job. She lays down the bunt to third base and beats it out. Seven halls of fame. He knows his way in the circle. Runner goes. Throw is in time. Good throw from Katie Stewart. It looked like maybe Texas was going to cut that off, but the Longhorns let it go through to get the runner at second base. She squares to bunt. Presley Limbaugh takes two. They let it go. The tag is right on her knee and really just a base running miscue by Kansas. So two down for Ainsley Linda. Texas executed that first and third play perfectly. Gutierrez trying to work out of the jam here with two down. Runner at third. And for the base hit in the first inning. Looks at strike two. Martinez over to first, and the Jayhawks leave one at third base. Alyssa Washington leads off the fourth inning with a base hit to left. The Longhorns have their leadoff hitter on for the third time in four innings. Solid piece of hitting from Alyssa Washington. Katie Simmons steps in now. Emma Tatum made a nice play on her ground ball back in the second inning.
Ball gets by Carsley. So Washington will head to second base. Does that change what you may do here with Simmons at the plate? I don't know with our home run yesterday. You know that has to be in the back of Mike White's head to let her swing away with runner in scoring position. She lays down the bunt, moves the runner. It saw it, brought it to the Longhorn lineup. So when you see the Texas twirl, it's in recognition of that little girl. Runner at third for Caden Henry. Swing and a miss. Good pitch from Brooks ahead in the count now one and two. Texas has had runners in scoring position every single inning they've been up and you'd like to see them capitalize here. So we're going to miss, gets the strikeout, throw to first to get the out, but the runner comes home. Good base running from Melissa Washington to score on the strikeout. You see Katie Brooks strikes out Caden Henry, but Carsley cannot hold on to it. Great base running by Texas, and they've really ran the bases great all weekend long, taking advantage of every mistake, and really nice job there. Longhorns on the board first here with a one nothing lead. This is Bella Dayton now with two down. Rounded back to the pitcher in the second inning. I believe got a piece of her. She left the box. One and one. <laughs> Offered one and two. They won't chase two and two. In the air to left, Limbaugh fighting the wind and the sun makes the catch. And that'll do it for John a Fielder's choice in the first inning. Looks at strike one. Sitlali Gutierrez starts off with an off speed pitch there. I'm sure they have in the back of their minds what Haley Kripe did yesterday. They're trying to keep her off balance. So we're going to miss Kripe with a triple and a home run on Saturday. KU's leading run producer. Lays off that one, one and two.
Two and two now to Kripe. Full count now to the Kansas shortstop. Olivia Bruno, the number four hitter on deck. Third base line, but foul. Inside. Cripe draws a walk. First one allowed by Gutierrez today. Really good job by Haley Cripe there. She gets down early in the count with two strikes and she battles all the way back for a leadoff walk. That's exactly what you want for Kansas, especially going down 1-0 to try to give yourself a chance against this number one Texas team. Here's Olivia Bruno who struck out in the first inning. Looks at the ball low. Bruno with a two run home run on Friday night. Uh, back one and one. And you see, does the situation change here? You have your four hole up. It is a bunt situation. Bruno squares, gets it down. The play will be to first. Mission accomplished. It's a good job by Olivia Bruno squaring early getting the bunt down to get the runner in scoring position. Campbell Bagshaw steps in. Struck out in the second inning. On the ground to third. Scott looks back the runner, makes the throw, and Simmons makes a nice dig. At first base, they're two away. No catcher. Campbell Bagshaw gets around that one, but Mia Scott looks the runner back at two and goes to first. Really nice pickup by Simmons there. Abby Carsley now with two down and a runner at second. Strike one. If you're Kansas, you have to really focus here on a quality at bat. What can I do to help my team move this runner? On the ground of second, Washington gobbles it up, throws the first, and the Jayhawks will leave one aboard. Spark at the park day here at Arocha Ballpark. You just saw a picture of a puppy sitting on a, a lap. Good, that is a good looking puppy. <laughs> I'm going to guess that that puppy has been in a lap once or twice before. Very comfortable yeah. watching. <laughs> Lays it down. Flanagan up quickly with it. Maloney on her way to second. I don't know if that just got past Bagshaw, if that really maybe just Nick Maloney on the throw. Flanagan's a... there to make the play. And it looks to me like Emma Tatum might have just lost it. It looks like it just hit off the tip of her glove and with Maloney right there. Sorry, that was Tatum at first base on the bunt.
So Maloney will end up at second base. With Mia Scott at the plate. And Jennifer McFall said yesterday, they're never going to go away. We have to eliminate the bleeding, eliminate the mistakes when we can. Nice bunt. That's going to turn out to a base hit. Second excellent bunt from Mia Scott. Yeah, Texas has kind of taken advantage of the short game. Kansas is struggling. They have a new third baseman, a new catcher, a new second baseman today, and they've... Vivi Martinez at the plate. Runner goes. Kansas doesn't throw. So now two in scoring position with nobody down. You see the infields in here. They're thinking for the whole way. Outside, one and one. Garza with a good block. Two and one. Hit hard, just past Tatum at second base, and that's going to go to the wall. Two Texas runs score, and Martinez with two big RBIs. Really good job by Vivi Martinez. That pitch is down in the zone. She gets her barrel over it with Emma Tatum playing in to try to prevent the runs from scoring. It gets past her and she drives in two runs for the double. And here's Reese Atwood. who has been on base twice with a fielder's choice and a walk and a runner in scoring position. A ball down low. And Martinez quickly to third base. And you can see how aggressive Texas is. They are so good at reading pitches, aren't they? They are. They've been aggressive all weekend. They take the extra bases when they can. Vivi Martinez doesn't hesitate there when she sees the ball in the dirt. And that's just on the base runner, right? I mean, the coach at that point can't can't say you got to go or yeah. isn't, isn't waving you over if, when it happens that quickly, right? If the coach is telling you to come on, it's too late. You shouldn't go. <laughs> Up the middle, base hit, and an RBI for Reese Atwood. Reese Atwood squares this pitch up. Haley Kripe is playing in, and with that RBI, that ties the program season single record with Lindsey Stevens and Taylor Tom. She is one of three Texas student athletes with over 60 or more runs in program history. It's taken over as a pinch runner. And here's Stewart, who has grounded into two double plays. Hit hard to left field, base hit. Five straight hits now for the Longhorns. That pitch is on the outside part of the play, but Stewart is so strong, she just gets around it for a base hit into left field. And if you're Kansas, you're thinking, how do we stop the bleeding? We need an out. How do we get an out? Alyssa Washington at the plate, takes it into right center field. This could be trouble, but run down by Linda. A nice play. The ball was in the gap. Mainsley Linda did well to track it down. Wallace will tag and move to third. But a nice play from Linda. That ball squared up. Lindup does a nice job. She gets a great read and 
She makes the throw into two so to keep that runner at first out of scoring position. Katie Simmons is grounded out. Laid down a sacrifice bunt. One down runners at the corners for the Longhorns. Hit hard to left center field in the air. Price goes back, makes the jump, but it's gone. A three run homer. And Simmons stays hot. A little Texas twirl and a seven nothing lead. Simmons homered yesterday. She gets a pitch up in the zone. She takes it right back where it comes from and she continues her homer today and you see here she comes and there's the Texas twirl. So Caden Henry at the plate still with just one down. Henry with a single and a strikeout. She has home run power as well. Good pitch from Ludwig. And it's just so hard to hold this Texas offense down. They're so talented in many different ways. They have so much speed, power. They can beat you in the short game. They're aggressive on the bases. And it takes all of them, Mike White said. You know, it's not one person. At different points in the season, it's been many different people. Ludwig with another off speed. Two and two. Foul on the left field line. Swing and a miss. Ludwig with a big strikeout. Really nice pitch location by Ludwig. You could see the drop ball down in the zone there and gets Caden Henry for the second out. Your attention, please. Pitch hitting for Texas. Number 43, Leanne Good. Leanne Good will grab a bat. Hit for Bella Day, the ninth hitter to come to the plate here for Texas in the fifth. Six runs on the board this inning. Good, had some playing time last year. She's had 52 at bats this year, 11 RBIs. On the ground to second, Tatum. Puts an end to it, but a big inning for the September Flanagan will lead things off for Kansas here in the fifth. The Jayhawks now down seven nothing as she looks at strike one. Into the ground. Foul. One and two. Foul. 
Swing and a miss. Strikeout for Gutierrez. Number four. Great pitch by Sitlali Gutierrez. She goes down in the zone. Her fourth strikeout of the day and really has just done a nice job of keeping the ball down in the zone and working in and out. Emma Tatum now for Kansas, who got the start at second base. Flew out to center field. Back in the third. Strike called. She has such great movement on that curveball. You see it starts outside. Great pitch placement by Gutierrez. All right, back to the pitcher. Gutierrez over to first. Two away. The center fielder, Angela Price. Center fielder Angela Price now with a double in the third inning. Just outside, 1 0. Angela Price caught the left fielder in an earlier inning, playing a little shallow. You see Leanne Good is out there now, and she hasn't taken any steps in. She's giving her that respect. On the ground, Scott over to first. Jayhawks are three up, three down. We're heading to the sixth inning. Field. You see pitching coach Laura Everling's going to call time. She just found that one really quickly in her glove, trying to protect herself. That'll get your heart going, won't it? Yes. If a ball comes back at me that quickly, I'm definitely awake now if I wasn't before. Good play from Ludwig. Victoria Hunter will hit for Mia Scott. Freshman out of Houston, Texas. Carsley hangs on to that tip. One and one. Great change of speed, one and two. Just misses outside, two and two. Carsley's had a couple of those today where they just get a piece and she can't quite hold on. Yeah. 
Full count now to the pinch hitter. Just misses outside. So a walk to Hunter. That is really, really, really close. Ludwig wanted this one. You see it's right there, just barely missed. Billy Martinez. Who drove in two with a double in that big fifth inning. Foul ball. Pair of walks in that double for Martinez on the day. Down low one and one. This is their two and one. Great pitch from Ludwig. Two and two. And Ludwig just does a nice job. She can really throw her off speed in any count and that's good to see that she can always go to that pitch no matter if she's down in the count. Foul away two and two still with one down. The counter at first base. Up the middle, Kripe steps on the bag, throw to first in time. Jayhawks turn two again. Kansas, Lee Fleissick, Casey Williams with you as Presley Limbaugh will lead things off for Kansas. Strike call, Limbaugh with a base hit back in the third inning. That Lolly Gutierrez has been very, very solid, allowing just three hits, striking out four thus far. She's done a nice job of getting ahead of hitters, eliminating the walk. She only has one walk on the day. Slap just past Mia Scott, who was in tight at third base. Limbo has her second hit of the day. Really nice job by Presley Limbaugh. She takes that pitch the other way. Mia Scott was playing way in, so she didn't have that much time to react. And Presley Limbaugh gets the leadoff single. Here's the Linduff now with a base hit in the first inning. That's a ball one. Strike called one and one. Too far outside, two and one.
Three and two now. And a 3 1 count there. That pitch was elevated. You'd like to see Ainsley Lindoff get after that one a little bit. On the ground to Scott. Over to first. In time, there's one down. The ball moves to second. Mia Scott does a nice job of picking up that ground ball for the first out of the inning. Haley Kripe now for Kansas. And on base twice with a fielder's choice and a walk. Up the middle. Washington makes the play. Runner moves to third, but they're two down. Designated player, Olivia Bruno. Olivia Bruno now with a strikeout in the first inning. Sacrifice bunt in the fourth. Runner at third with two down. Swing and a miss. Olivia Bruno, typically pretty patient. We've seen in this series, she has been more aggressive. She had a home run Friday. O2 now to Bruno. And Sitlali Gutierrez goes right back to the drop ball she just swung at. We'll see if she continues with that plan. Bruno got a piece of it. Stays live at 0 2. Bruno still fighting 0 2. Two pitch. She's continued to go down. You'd like to wonder if she'll show off speed at all here. Bruno takes this one into center field. Caden Henry tracks it down and makes the catch. We're heading to the seventh inning. Reese Atwood will lead things off for Texas here in the seventh inning, looking at ball one. Atwood with a single in the fifth inning to bring in her 66th run of the season. Down the right field line, drifting foul. Linda gives chase. Atwood is definitely all green light. We chatted about that earlier today in hitters counts. Yesterday, she hit a home run in a 3-0 count. Today, she just takes a hack at one at 2-0. and She knows exactly what she's looking for. Outside three and one now. Into right field. Linda drifts back, makes the catch to the wall, and there's one down. I told you that Mike White was an absolute legend coming out of New Zealand as a fast pitch softball pitcher. He's in seven different halls of fame. Number of national championships, world championships. He, he had a crew of eight of his former teammates came down from Iowa. They won the world championship in Canada back in 1987 with Teleconnect out of Iowa. Those guys really had a good time. A bunch of stories about how good a pitcher Mike White was. 
He pitched six games in that 1987 World Championship. He was the MVP pitcher. He threw the last game with a torn bicep in his arm and still won the championship. I say as good a pitcher as he was, he might be an even better golfer. He's won his club championship three times, played college golf at Mount Mercy up in Iowa, which really was the reason he stayed in Iowa, met his wife in Iowa. He said that's his second passion. He absolutely loves to play golf. I have to give a shout out to one of his teammates, Big Bird, who told me that he hit a home run so far. He told Mike White, could have shown a movie on that flight. Told him I was going to steal that line at some point. They're able to spend some time with their former teammate this weekend coming down from Iowa. Great group of guys. 3 1 now to Katie Stewart. Strike all 3 and 2. on the right field line. We were talking about how important these remaining games are for Kansas. Yeah, you look at the standings, Kansas is in pretty good shape, but boy, each, each victory from here on out is really precious, isn't it? It is crucial. They will go into the Big 12 tournament as well, and those games count. All right, back up the middle off the glove of Ludwig. That's really a good pitch location. Katie Stewart does a nice job of going down and getting that pitch, driving it right back up the middle. Going, to about, going back to what we were chatting about, Kansas right now is ranked 36 in RPI. With that in your record, you want to stay within 50. So they're at 36 right now. Texas is number one in the country in RPI and national rankings. Kansas has had one of the best years they've had in a really long time. And every single game from here on out as we approach postseason quickly matters. Inside two and one. You know, I asked Mike White earlier this week, I said, you're number one in RPI. Do you think your strength of schedule has helped you? And he said, you know, last year we thought we were in a good spot and we weren't. If you want to be the best, you have to play the best. And definitely early on this year, they played some quality softball teams. To look at the standings right there, UCF. You've been following that game. Lost the first game against Baylor, correct? That is correct. And the last I checked, it was 0-0 in the fourth. They had to play a doubleheader today. UCF right on the Jayhawks' heels. Full count now to Alyssa Washington. On the ground, Tatum. To Kripe, the first double play. Jayhawks turning two again. Falls is getting these young kids some opportunities to see what they can do. Starts her off with a strike. You know Jennifer McFalls very well. You were the director of ops for here here at Kansas. What will be her message after this weekend series 
Again, you see the number one team in the country for the second time this year. But you've got a big week ahead with Kansas City midweek. And then right back into Big 12 play. Glove there by Simmons. Nice play. And there's one down. Yeah, you know, I think it's just taking advantage of your opportunities. The Big 12 is a tough conference. They've seen the number one team twice here at Arrocha Ballpark. They have to go on the road next week to Oklahoma State. They see UMKC Wednesday. That's a must win for them. And then they get BYU at home. And so I think there's some positives in this season. They've had a great year. They have a chance to make postseason. And I think that's what I would say to these student athletes. This season is not over. They have a great chance to make postseason for the first time in a while. And I think it might be since 2015, potentially, they made a regional back in Columbia. And so I think they need to focus on the positives there. Abby Carsley for Kansas. 0 for 2 on the day. And looking for Texas, they see Iowa State next week. And then they have Texas Tech to finish off the series. And Mike White said, you know, Oklahoma had has done a great job of owning the number one spot. He's like, that's what we have to do now. We have to be willing to own that spot for multiple weeks in a row. They don't want to rent. They want to own, I believe is what he said. Yes. Right? <laughs> 2-2 count now to Carsley. Fouled off. There's what's left for Texas. one in the country still chasing Oklahoma in the Big 12 high in the air center field short center field Lisa Washington the second baseman takes it they're two away so it's up to September Flanagan now Strike call. Out away, and now Flanagan down 0 2 in the count. Well, I think certainly a lot of positives for Mike White and his Texas Longhorns. His pitching was very, very good this weekend. They showed some power, showed off their speed. It looked like a team poised to make a run. Ground ball, Mia Scott over to first, and that'll do it. Texas completes the sweep and takes down the Jayhawks 7-0. Texas 7, Kansas nothing.